Thank you, Dan. Very good. Appreciate you. If you don't need your pineys, wherever you, wherever you hail from, uh, it's a beautiful time of year. Appreciate the ladies and, and maybe a few gentlemen that put those out each Sunday. I do appreciate them. It's always very beautiful. Uh, if you read the newspaper, watch television, our local community, or country, or world uh, is in a lot of strife and a lot of struggle. And I thought the upper room scripture last night uh, spoke to that very well, and I want to share that again with you and for those of you who haven't read it. So peace, 1 Peter 5, chapter 6. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and in his good time he will honor you. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about what happens to you. Be careful, watch out for attack from the devil and your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lamb, lion, excuse me, looking for some victims to devour. Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to be eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. After you have suffered a little while, he will restore support and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power is his forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the call to worship. Can you stand, please? Who is like our God in glory and strength? The voice of the Lord thunders over the waters. Who is like the Lord in power and might? The voice of God breaks the mighty cedars. Who is the who is like the Holy One in awe and wonder? The voice of the Almighty shakes the wilderness. God sits enthroned as King forever. Worship God in holy splendor. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us pray. Your spirit calls us here, O God, to behold the glory of your majesty and power. For adopting us into your family and making us heirs with Christ, we thank you. For freeing us from the failings of the flesh, that we may be born anew with the water and the spirit, we praise you. Amen. Amen. In honor of Memorial Day, we're going to sing 697, My Country Chesapeake. 697. <laughs>
Almighty God, we thank you for all the many blessings of life. We come now giving you back a portion of what you have given us. Bless the offering today. May it be used for your glory. Amen. Amen. We pass the peace of Christ. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. How you doing? All right. Yes. You pretty good. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I get you mixed up all the time, don't I? Our next song is on the wings of a dove, and this is done in memory of Genevieve Lover. I played this on a funeral when you were so ago. She was my Sunday school teacher when I came here 45 years ago. In our classroom is where the bathroom is now. Okay, let's stand. Say she's happy to be here, so I'll say we're happy to be here. <laughs> How's that been going? Is that been 
I'd like to ask her for Mary Beth's granddaughter. He was at a funeral Friday and fell and crushed his knee to the bed. Oh. And also my best buddy, Andy. Andy has four legs, but I love him. He's got two. And I just, I thank Greg and Sarah and Mary for always being there for me. Luke's granddaughter, Aviana Chishurin, is a doctor. Oh, wow. wow. Congratulations. Not sure he's sorry. Like when my daughter went through veterinary school and I got the crown, that was beautiful. Mom got along very well with her surgery. She's at home. Uh, should be able to fix me some lunch on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday <laughs> next week. So that's just a side note in case she's watching. <laughs> Concerns? Y'all in the Rexford family? Yes, sir. Miss Rexford passed this week. She's a fine, fine lady. Our country. Our country. I'd like I think to. Ann Wyvern just had surgery for two, though. I think she's doing a little fine. Her surgery's in place. You don't have to be so concerned for me. She took the throne and I away from her. Did she? <laughs> I think our church. Our church. Too easy. I'd like to say a prayer for my students. As nice as it is, as it is to be done with the school year, I know that school for a lot of them is the only safe place that they have where they feel important and loved. And so I do worry about them over the next several months. Okay. And I realize that my son is a social worker at high school in Point Pleasant. Some of them want to get the food they need. And they do feed through the summer down pretty well. So it's a fun time to get out of school, but it's not a good reason. It's so hard. Mary Lou Wagner, uh, I think she told me this week or next week meets with her doctor on her ear. This week. Yeah, this week. Yeah. A um, youth pastor from Duff Street United Methodist Church, where Chuck and I were when he died, their youth pastor at 43 passed away the other day. So that church is struggling. All right, let us pray and we'll finish with the uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. The day we honor those who have sacrificed their lives. We thank you for the freedom that we have, the freedom to be here today, the freedom to go about our business. We thank you for the many joys that we have, the innumerable joys that you've passed down on us. We appreciate that, the many blessings. We put the concerns in your hands. We pray for our church, we pray for our community. We pray for our country, we pray for our world, and we know that you are the way for peace and grace to all these entities. For those that are traveling this weekend, may they enjoy this weekend with some free time, but still keep you in their mind and give them traveling mercies. We thank you for the many, many blessings that you've given this church and all our folks. And with this, in Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I thank you for inviting me here today to be able to share God's word with you. <clears throat> So uh, we're going to be reading from Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. We're going to be talking a little bit about a Galilean wedding and what Jesus has to say about it. It's a little bit of a kind of a long scripture, but uh, 
I don't have any better place to be. <clears throat> and Jesus spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out servants to call on those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, the, the, the dinner has been prepared, the ox has, and fatted calf has been killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it, went their own ways. One to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized the servants, <coughs> treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about this, he was furious and went out with his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. And so the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man who was not who did not have on wedding garments. So he said to him, Friend, where is your wedding garments? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot. And throw him away into and cast him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Glory to God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we've all been to weddings. We know pretty much how it goes. How many of you ever sat in a wedding sat in a church at a wedding and thought, can we get your food yet? <laughs> 15 minutes, 10 minutes is just too long. Sometimes 15 minutes. So, a guy will leave a wedding takes a whole year. And then after the wedding starts, it sometimes can last a week at a time. So, in a Galilean wedding, how this starts out is the groom makes a proposal to the bride at the main gate of whatever town or village they are in at the time, it has to be public. And the groom uh, makes his covenant with the bride and makes his proposal. And he offers up gifts, they are exchanged, and the groom offers the bride what is called a cup of joy. The bride can either accept or reject this offer. If she drinks from it, she falls under the law of Moses and is consecrated to the groom <coughs> under the law. And then she, she will not drink of that cup again with the groom until they both enter the, the groom's father's house. Now I'd like to read to you from 20, Matthew 26, verse 29. Actually, I'm going to start on verse 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Kind of, kind of familiar, isn't it? Kind of sounds a lot, doesn't it? So the groom will then leave and go to his father's house and they will not see each other for, the, for a whole year and during that year the groom will spend time building on a room to his father's house he will fill it with the things that they need you know a bed of the furniture and stools and and anything that they may need at the time um, whatever they need to live on whatever they need to live he will spend an entire year building a room and filling it with furniture. Now John, four, John chapter 14 verse 3 says that Jesus said he would prepare a place for us. 
Remember when Jesus said that? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you will be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. He's going to prepare a place for us because we are his bride. And he is the groom. And he's preparing a place for us right now. But not only did the groom have to spend a whole year preparing, and so does the bride. She has to gather up clothes or gather up garments and gather up material to make her own wedding dress. She has to pick out her bridesmaids and make sure they're dressed properly. And she has to have all the arrangements and everything that she requires to be married. Now, this is the tricky part. The bride does not know when the groom is coming for her. It may be around about a year, but nobody knows for sure what day or hour the groom is coming. So it would, oftentimes the bride would sleep in her wedding dress. And I, I, yeah, I got that reaction from the other two churches. How many of you brides would like to sleep in your wedding dress? <laughs> Not just one night, but sometimes for a week or two weeks or three weeks or however long it took until the bride came or the groom came to get you. Now, I watch, my, my wife watches say yes to the dress once in a while on TV and I see how much some of those dresses cost and how they're made and how delicate some of them are and some of them you couldn't even fit through that door. So that would be, that would be a rough state of affairs to, to be in. So I feel for you. The bride always has to be ready and watching and waiting and so does her bridesmaids. Because she never knows when the groom is going to come calling. Now, the groom doesn't even know when he's coming. Because only the father can, can tell the groom when the time is right. The father is the only one that knows when the groom can go get his bride. And the only time that happens is when the father of the groom is satisfied with the room he's built and how he's prepared a place for the bride and the groom to live in. But Jesus said in Matthew 23, verse 36, And turning the day and the hour, no one, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son of Man, knows, only the Father. Jesus don't even know when he's coming back. Jesus don't even know when that time's going to happen because only the Father knows. The same way in the wedding. A lot of parallels taking place here between the wedding and what Jesus said. Jesus made a lot of statements and tried to prepare us and help us to understand about his second coming. And he compared a lot of them to the Galilean wedding. Now in a Galilean wedding, the groom would get his bride in the middle of the night. Because oftentimes that's when the father decides, he says, okay, you can go get it. Now why it's in the middle of the night, I don't know. I, mean, I guess it's just, I really can't explain that. That's just how it happens. Um, but the bride has to be ready and waiting, and so does her bridesmaids. Not only that, but the guests, the people who are invited to this wedding, they have to be ready and waiting to go as well. So I would assume the bride's not the only one sleeping in her clothes at the time. Now I would like to read to you from Matthew 25, verses 6 through 13. And at midnight a cry was heard, and behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Then all, the, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise was answered and said, No, lest there be not enough for us and for you, but go rather to those who sell and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with the with excuse me went with him in the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, "Lord, Lord, open to us." But he said, "But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming." So much like the, the, the story of the ten virgins, five of the wise, five of the foolish, we have to be ready and waiting when that time comes. 
when God makes his decision and he wake when the father makes his decision and he wakes up and tells the groom to go get his bride, he gathers his groom groomsman and he goes to get her. But this is not just a casual walk through the park. He's blowing shofars, he's making all kinds of noise, he's trying to wake people up, he's trying to wake up the whole town. So that not just the bride knows he's coming. But anyone who is invited also has a chance to get up and prepare herself and go with them. Now, once they get to the bride's house, the bride is carried on a litter from the bride's house back to the groom's father's house where the wedding takes place. Now, once they go into the groom's house, the door's shut and it's locked. If you're not in that wedding party, if you're not in that procession when it gets there, you will not be entered. Or allowed access into that house. And Jesus used a lot of different the Galilean wedding to try to tell us how his second coming is going to happen and how it's going to go down. And I believe the second coming is very soon. I believe his second coming is very close. Now I do not stand here and even try to suggest that I know when it's going to happen. Only God, only God knows when it's going to happen. But he did give us signs to look for. And we're seeing some of those signs right now. His coming is close. It's very soon. And our only one responsibility that we have to ourselves is to be ready when he gets here. Now I'm not telling you you gotta sleep in your clothes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we have to be ready in our hearts and our minds to receive him and to be ready to go with him when he comes back and starts calling people because it's only a one shot deal once he calls you up that's it I don't want to be here I don't want to be left behind there's too many things in heaven for me to look forward to I got family I got friends and says I want to see Jesus face to face I want to ask him how he made a tree it's my one question I want to know how he did that that's just personal note uh, we have to be ready when Jesus comes calling when we are the bride and he is the groom we have to prepare ourselves and keep preparing ourselves every day just like he's going to come tonight every night when we go to bed we have to be prepared and ready keep God's word on your heart and his name on your lips when you go to bed at night and be thinking about him and keep him in your heart and mind the next morning as soon as you wake up and keep him there all day long Center your life on Christ. Center your life on His Word. The more of His Word you read and can memorize, the better off you are. And I will tell you this, if you're young, memorize it now, because as you get older, it's not as easy to remember. So, my son's making fun of me. Um, if, if, you're, if, if you're younger, please, please read as much Scripture as you can. Memorize it. If it speaks to you, carry it with you all the time. Because when the devil comes calling, that's how you beat him. When the evil one comes and tries to tries to throw rocks in front of you for you to trip over, that's how you move him out of the way. You use scripture. And he will leave you alone. But prepare yourself for the second coming and be ready just like the bride was for the groom. Eat and sleep the word of God. Keep it on your heart and on your mind at all times. Be ready and be prepared because he is coming. Do we have a closing here? 419. I am going to go to the Lord. 419. The altar is always open to anyone who has a need and wants to have a little talk with Jesus. It's here and it's open.
and serve our God. We will go to serve our neighbors. Even when we feel unworthy, we will go to serve our sisters and brothers. We will go to serve our world. Even when we feel unprepared, we will go to serve Christ's people. We are your servants, Lord. Send us. Amen. Good news. Amen.